If you've seen my past videos about uh, using weird chords in your songs, let me show you how Billie Eilish does it on Happier Than Ever. So this is not where you're borrowing a chord from the parallel minor or major. This, if you took a music theory class, they would call it a secondary dominant. That's a term that, you know what? It's not that important that you understand why it's called a secondary dominant. What I just explained it as is it's a major chord where a minor chord would normally be. And the reason that is important is because it accommodates a non-diatonic note. All right, I'm, I've got it so you can see my hands. I'm not going to get super fancy with the playing, and I'm not going to play any of the chord extensions like the ninth, sevenths, and ninths. I'm just going to stick to the bare bones triads just so we can talk about the fundamental movement of the chords. So this song, the melody is, it starts on the five. So there's your major scale. It's on the fifth scale degree. Or does it go down to that? But anyway, it goes to the sharp five. Okay, so how do we accommodate that sharp five? We're gonna use, instead of a minor three chord, we're gonna use a major three chord. So in the key of C, which is what we're in, normally diatonically, the notes that go with the major scale, the three chord would be minor, right? But this one uses a major three chord that accommodates that G sharp that raised five, because the, the, the one chord is one, three, five, the three chord is three, five, seven, but a major chord in, so with a three as a root is three sharp, five, seven. So, so. Because of how this one works, I'm going to go ahead and explain the whole secondary dominant thing. Secondary dominant, dominant chord is the five chord, okay? That's, if you took a theory class, that's what they would teach you. They call the five chord the dominant chord. So it's a secondary dominant because that major chord is the five of a different chord in the key. So in this case, E major is the five of the A minor, the sixth chord. It's a five of six. It just so happens in this song that that E major does resolve to its relative five. I'm sorry, it, to its relative tonic. I'm sorry if I'm losing you on this. Some people might actually like this part, but it doesn't have to do that. That's why I don't worry so much about it calling it a secondary dominant and explaining why it belongs there because it doesn't need to resolve to the chord that it's the five of. It can go to anything. So in Billie Eilish's song, she uses that major three chord. It doesn't matter if you understand that it's a five of the six and that it's resolving to the six. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that you know that you can put a major chord where a minor chord would go and it gives you new melodic options. Even if the melody didn't go to that sharp five, you could still use that major three chord and it would just add a fresh color even if the scale degree was one or a three, I mean, sorry. Doesn't have to go to the, the raised five to justify it being there. So just know that in the major key, major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, one, you can put a major two, major three, major six, where the minors would normally go. And as long as the bass line is singable and you do stuff that intuitively feels right harmonically, they, they belong there. You can break all the rules. It's pretty cool.